go live. Okay. Brother Todd, you got that, brother Todd, you got that song ready, brother? Yes, sir, I'm ready to go. Okay, let's go ahead and get it started. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way. Because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. For evil doers shall be cut off. But those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Tonight's reading came from Psalms 37 verses 3 through 9. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. Can't hear you, brother James. Mike. I said amen, brother. Thank you for that song. Yes, sir. Uh, All right, here we go. Welcome back, family. Welcome back, brothers and sisters, to another episode of Let Us Reason Together as we uh, come together uh, each Friday evening to bring the Sabbath in uh, with the word of God going forth. Uh, my name is Brian, Brother James. I'm out here at the uh, Israel of God in the Bay Area. My co-host, Brother Kevin, from the St. Louis Israel of God. How you doing, Brother Kevin? I'm doing all right, Israel. Peace. Peace, brother. Yes, sir. And I know, uh, look, y'all, the St. Louis family had a loss recently. Uh, one of the brothers there. So, so keep that entire uh, St. Louis family in your prayers. Uh, we lost a good brother, Brother James. And mm-hmm. uh, he's going to be uh, sorely missed by the family. Right, Brother Kevin? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Brother. Yes. Sir. yes. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and also with us, Brother Todd from the Israeli God in Baton Rouge. Peace, brother. How are you this evening? Peace, brother. Doing great. No complaints, brother. I know Glad that's to be right. be back on the show. Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes. So, with that being said, brothers and sisters, we, uh, we want to... We want to thank everybody for continuing to uh, support the show and to come back week after week to tune in and just sit down in the in the living room with us as we chop this book up. Special shout, Sister Latrice, mm-hmm. uh, Mom the E Bear, my sister Angel. Uh, who else on here? Mm-hmm. Esther Patterson from Trinidad. Peace and blessings to you as well. And uh, so. Tonight's lesson, brothers and sisters, is titled, You Shall Reap What You Sow. Again, you shall you shall reap what you sow. And we ask that you like, share, and uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Let Us Reason Together Broadcast. And again, we thank you. And so look, let's dive right on into this lesson. Look, brothers and sisters, the bottom line with God is uh, he's a righteous judge he's going to reward you according to what you have earned okay if you reap wickedness that's what you're going to receive if you reap goodness uh, and you and you reaped on the spiritual side of things then that's what you're going to get and he is going to reward you fairly okay And that's the bottom line to this thing. So it all going to come down to where's your faith? Because your actions going to be dictated by your belief in this word. Mm -hmm. It's all that simple. Okay. It's just like I was telling the brothers. I got pulled over a few weeks ago because out here you got to have a front license plate on the front of your car. So a police followed me. From one town over into another. When I change lanes, he change lanes. I turn left, he turn left. I turn right, he turn right. Do y'all know what kind of intimidation tactic that is? So the, when when, I, when he finally turned the lights on, I immediately pulled over and let my window down and put my hands where he could see him, right? Mm-hmm. And he right. and I said, uh, you know, I asked him what was the problem. And he said, well, you don't have no front plate. 
And I said, well, you know, I just got the car. I just ordered the rack to put on the front of the car, you know, to uh to put the plate on. So he was like, all right, have a good evening. He just walked off. So mm-hmm. I said, you know what? <laughs> you you won't do that again. Not for that reason. You see what I'm right. saying? So, And I believe they'll pull me over again for not having that plate. And I don't want to get pulled over. So guess what? I got a front plate hanging on the front of my car now. Okay? So if you believe something, it's going to cause you to act a certain way and behave a certain way, okay? It's all wrapped in where your faith is. And if you're reaping uh, uh, wickedness, if you're reaping sin, then that's what you're going to get, all right? So now, we're going to jump right in on into this lesson. Let's go Daniel chapter 9, my brother. Let's start off with Daniel the prophet. We're going to start with Daniel the prophet, and he's going to put some on your mind that's going to take us all the way through this lesson. Okay? He's going to take us all the way through this lesson, what he's about to tell you right now. Daniel chapter 9, my brother. We're going to pick it up at verse 13. 9 and 13. Go ahead and read it. As it is written in the law of Moses. Yep. All this evil has come upon us. Yet may we not our prayer before the Lord our God. Mm-hmm. That we might turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth. Mm-hmm. Therefore, have the Lord watched upon the evil mm-hmm. and brought it upon us. Mm-hmm. For the Lord our God is righteous in all his works which he doeth. For we obeyed not his voice. Now, that's the word that we got to take all the way through this lesson. For the Lord our God is righteous in all his works. If he's blessing you because you deserve that. If he pull gas on you and light you, it's because you deserve that. You earned that. And we mm. have to understand that about this God right here. Whatever you, whatever you do, you're going to be rewarded according to what you have been doing. Don't let somebody fool you and tell you we're not under works, we under grace. Listen. The only way grace is available to you is if you hiding up under the blood of Jesus. And the only way to hide under that blood is to keep his commandments. Okay? It's all that simple. So now, let's go to Acts chapter 17. Again, the title is, as you can see, in the bottom right hand of, of the screen, you shall reap whatever it is you sowing. It's going to come back on you. You can bank on it. Sometimes it's immediate and sometimes it lingers and sometimes it sits around that punishment sits around and it waits until it's the most inconvenient time because it drops in your lap when you are already dealing with six or seven other things. You see what I'm saying? And likewise, if you're doing good, then you're going to reap good. You're going to reap the goodness of the Lord. OK, you're going to reap his mercy. And his bountifulness. All right. Acts 17 and verse 29, brother Todd. 17 and 29. Go ahead and read it. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we are not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone, graven by art and man's device. That is right. Go ahead. And the times of this ignorance, God winked at, Mm -hmm. but now commanded all men everywhere to repent. Go ahead. Because he have appointed a day mm-hmm. in the which he will judge the world in righteousness. He going to judge them in what? In righteousness. So so whatever his decision is, is going to be absolute in its correctness. Okay? You are going to get whatever you sold. Whatever reward you get is because you sold that seed. You sold and you going to reap whatever you sow. All right? Go ahead and finish that, brother. By that man whom he have ordained, whereof he have given assurance unto all men, mm-hmm. in that he have raised them from the dead. Oh, so it said God, the, the Father, raised a man from the dead, and that's the man that's going to judge the world in righteousness? Let's go see who that is. Let's go John chapter 5. You see that? It says, hey, the Godhead is not like gold or silver or stone, brothers. Grave and art. See, I think some people so wrapped up in their little Jesus pieces and this man and this image hanging on this cross, you don't believe that he got a lake of fire big enough to put thousands and millions of people in it. 
But the book say, if you believe the book, the book say he there's going to be one and people are going to be in it. And there is going to be some weeping and some gnashing of teeth. Yes, and sir. everybody that's in there will have earned that spot. <laughs> they will be sowing what they reap. Sabrina Flowers, peace to you, my sister. She mm. was the one that was fussing at me. When I was in Riverdale some months ago, <laughs> I saw her in the hallway. She was like, Brother Jay, why you and Brother Kevin don't have the show back on? And I was just telling Brother Kevin, I was on the phone with him when she said that, man. Yes, sir. And, I, and Brother Kevin heard her, okay? Definitely. So, yeah, so, so, uh, oh, yeah, that's a family up there in Alaska. Brother Scott, Sister Erica, peace and blessings to y'all. So, look. We just read back there in Acts that God gave judgment to this man that he raised up from the dead. And we know that is Jesus the Christ, right? So right. now let's go to John chapter 5, and we're going to let Jesus confirm that himself. Brother Jehoshaphat, peace to you, brother. Peace and blessings. John 5 and 22, go ahead and read that. For the Father judges no man, mm -hmm. but have committed all judgment unto the Son. You see that? See, that's who he raised up from the dead. The father ain't going to do the judging. He's going to turn the judging over to somebody that walked in this flesh like you and I are doing right now. Skip down, my brother, verse 26 and continue. For as the father have life in himself, mm -hmm. so have he given to the son to have life in himself. Go ahead. And have given him authority to execute judgment also. Why is that? Because he is the son of man. See, that's why he gave that judgment to Jesus, because Jesus, son of man, Jesus walked in his flesh. Father didn't walk in his flesh. Jesus did. So you can't roll up on Jesus and tell him he don't know what it's like to be in his flesh. He don't know what it's like to be under this pressure because he did walk in this flesh and he mm -hmm. does understand what it's like and that's why judgment was given unto him as we just read go ahead and read brother marvel not at this mm -hmm. for the hour is coming into mm -hmm. which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice yes and shall come forth mm -hmm. they that have done good unto the resurrection of life see that see the ones that did good they're gonna reap what they sold and what they're gonna reap is the resurrection of life go ahead and read and they that have done evil mm -hmm. unto the resurrection of damnation and the ones that sold evil they're gonna reap damnation they are going to get it go ahead and read brother I can of my own self do nothing. Mm -hmm. As I hear, I judge. Mm -hmm. And my judgment is just. Y'all see that? See, 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 see. Daniel told us that he is righteous mm -hmm. in all his works. And now he telling you right here that his judgment is going to be just. He's going to have a justified, just judgment. Okay? Whatever you get, you sold that. Hmm. I mean, you 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 you, you sold it, and, you and then you gonna reap. That's right. The proceeds, okay. Go ahead and read, brother. Because I seek not my own will, uh huh, but the will of the Father which have sent me. And that is correct. So now let's go to Second Corinthians chapter five, and I got a couple more spots, and I'm gonna land, and I'm gonna give brother Kevin the mic. Let's go Second Corinthians five. See what we have already come out the gate showing you is. You don't have to believe there's a lake of fire at the end, but it's written in this book. It is written in this book. And if you believe it, then you should believe that there is one. So now, 2 Corinthians 10, my brother, I mean 5, 2 Corinthians 5, let's start at verse 10. 2 Corinthians 5 and 10, go ahead and read it. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. I know that's right. Go ahead. That everyone may receive the things done in his body. Uh -huh. According to that he have done. Y'all see that? Do you see that? Mm -hmm. He said everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that which he done. So if, if you have done good, you going to reap. Uh, 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 everlasting life if you have done evil you going to reap a uh, 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 damnation okay go ahead and read whether it be good or bad 
Mm-hmm. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. The what? The terror, brother. Ooh. Mm. Let's marinate with that word terror just for a couple of seconds here. Like Brother Jeremiah did that lesson way back in 2008, brother. He said, uh, terror from the sky was the title of that lesson, man. Man, that lesson blew me away because we can read that the, it's going to be a great and terrible day when the Lord bust them clouds open and come come on back down and start, and start cleaning this place up. Going to be a lot of bloodshed. It's going to be a lot of weeping, okay? He said, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, since you know he going to bring the terror, go ahead and read. We persuade men. We persuade you. Go ahead. But we are made manifest unto God. Uh-huh. And I trust also, also are made manifest in your consciences. He said, look here, we trying to persuade y'all to line your life up with this book and to get your house in order. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 11. We are trying to persuade you because there's going to be a lot of people. Get in that damnation, and you probably ain't going to pick, you probably ain't going to hear one of them at any time that said at any point in their life that they wanted to go in that lake of fire. However, their actions, what they sold in their life, got them that decision, mm -hmm. got them that judgment. Okay? Hmm. No, they didn't say it out of their mouth. No, they didn't even think it. Uh, somebody said that lesson terror from the sky can't be found. Hey, somebody got it. I think I got it on. I think I got that lesson. I think I got that on a DVD or something somewhere in my, you know, in one of these uh, boxes around here. Uh, uh, who, whoever this person is, uh, EMA Israel. Somebody got that lesson, brother. Ter huh? What you say, brother Kevin? Tell Jeremiah to dust that off then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah right. tell him to dust it off and redo it. <laughs> hey, somebody got it. I'm, I'm going to look through my boxes and see if I got it. I know I got a, I got cases with all them old DVDs in there. But somebody got that lesson. But anyway, um, where we at? We at uh, Proverbs, Proverbs 11. 11. Yeah. Let's go Proverbs 11. Because look here, man. The Lord is coming with that terror. And people, people think it's a game. People think he's playing. People think this book is a joke. People think That's this book right. is a joke. This serious business right here. And you are going to get whatever you earned. It ain't, hey, this ain't no, you know, ain't no participation trophies in this right here. You know how they doing stuff now. Your kid play Little League Baseball. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you know, everybody get a trophy. When right. I was playing, if you earned most valuable player, you got that. If you earned most improved, you got that. Okay. If you earn the batting champion thing because your, your batting average was higher than everybody else, then you got that trophy. Home run king got that trophy. If you didn't do anything worth talking about, hey, you went home empty-handed. That's right, bro. And, and that was for you to, to go work on your game. You understand right. what I'm saying? Yeah, that's right. And <laughs> the Lord ain't giving out no participation trophies. Man, you're going to get what you earn. Hmm. It's all that simple. So, we so now... Ask. So huh? we, gotta act, we gotta actually work for this thing, huh? You have to work for it. That's why it's written. Therefore, let us labor. Yes, sir. Uh, you got to work to get into this kingdom, brothers and sisters. Yes, and you sir. even have to work for the Lord to bless you and protect you. And to make and to be an enemy to your enemies. You have to do work for that. Okay? It's all that simple. So now. Hey, look at look at my brother Albert Tillman. Yeah. He told he said I was the home run <laughs> champion. I used to hit him, but I wasn't the home run king. It was some other brother hit more than me. But I used to go out to park occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> that brother played ball with me. But uh, but yeah, but no sir. Hey, if you got a trophy, you earn that joker. So the Lord's the same way. So now Proverbs 11, brother Kevin, brother Todd, and let's pick this up at verse one, and then we are gonna do some skipping. 11 and 1. Go ahead and read. A false balance is abomination to the Lord, mm -hmm. but a just weight is his delight. You see that? See, that lets you know right there. The Lord ain't going to be no false judge. He ain't going to say, well, that's my little nephew, so I'm going to let him slide. Because right. the book tells you he is no respect of persons, okay? Ain't no participation trophies on this. You're going to get what you earn. Skip down to verse 3, my brother, and read it. The integrity of the upright shall guide him. 
Yes. But the perverseness of transgressors shall destroy them. See, the perverseness of a sinner, his actions going to get him destroyed. He's destroying his own self. Uh, okay? Huh, Brother Kevin? What say yes, you, brother? Mm. Yes, sir, brother. Yes, sir. It says the perverseness of a transgressor, that's a sinner, that's what's going to destroy him. Yeah, you can say the Lord is going to destroy him, but the Lord is giving him what he asks for. Y'all got it? Huh, bro, Kevin? Give you enough rope. That's on you to hang yourself. Yes, sir. You gonna get that because you earned that. Skip down to verse five and continue. The righteousness of the perfect shall direct his way. Yes. But the wicked shall fall by his own wickedness. Do y'all see that? He, here it is again. The righteous person, the righteousness of the perfect person shall direct his way, right? Then it says, but the wicked shall fall by his own wickedness. See, it's a person's sin that's going to get them hurt. It's a person's transgressions that's going to get that person punished by God. It's that person's own thoughts and actions that's going to get him in trouble with the Lord. That's why it's written. You got to work out your own salvation. Okay? So, and, and then guess what? Your damnation, you work that out yourself too. Don't it swing? Don't that door swing both ways? Mm -hmm. Swing both ways. Yes, you does. working out your you work you working out your own salvation and you working out your own damnation too. Okay. <sighs> Somebody put that on the t-shirt. Elite <laughs> brother Ledrickville, let's go. You working out your salvation and you working out your own damnation too. So now, what was that? That was verse that was the uh, end of five. That was five. Go ahead and read. The righteousness of the upright shall deliver them. Mm -hmm. But transgressors shall be taken in their own naughtiness. See, we we reading the same thing over and over. The righteous person, it says the upright person, it said their righteousness is what's going to deliver them. Yes, and sir. I keep on telling y'all that's your currency with God. Yeah. Your obedience and your righteousness is what you use to get what you want from the Lord. That's what he receives. OK, so shall now. I shall, huh, get out, I shall get out of jail free card. Yes, sir. It's a help me get this job card. Yes, sir. Credit it's a it's way. a it's, it's a heal my aunt Joyce card. Uh huh. Huh? Yes, sir. It's a help me get this car card so I can go to work. Uh -huh. Your righteousness is that. Your obedience is that. And and so on the flip side of that, the wicked shall fall by his wickedness and transgressors should be taken in their own naughtiness. On the opposite side of that, the righteousness of the upright person, that's what's going to deliver them. Because when the Lord look upon them and see their righteousness, then he's going to hear their cry and give them what they asking for. It's all that simple. And you are going to reap whatever you have sowed. OK. So now, let, let's skip on down, my brother, to verse 17. What that say? The merciful man doeth good to his own soul. Yeah. But he that is cruel troubleth his own flesh. Y'all, <laughs> amen, we keep, we keep on saying, amen, you hurt yourself. It's almost like you doing the Plaxico birds, man. You, you pulling your pistol out and shooting yourself. Yeah. When you commit sin against your God. Right. You hurting yourself. Brother Danny the prophet, priest, peace, brother down there in Baton Rouge. Listen, you hurt yourself. You reap what you sow. You the reason you got trouble in your life. Quit blaming other people. And a lot of times we like to do that. We like to we like to point at other people and say, she the reason I, I lost that job. He the reason I got kicked out that apartment. She the reason that I lost my money. He the reason that I blew my money. Okay? No. We're reading right here in Proverbs, the wickedness fall by their own wickedness. Transgressors shall be taken in their own naughtiness. And we just read down here, right in verse 17, it says, he that is cruel, trouble his own flesh. Mm -hmm. What say you that, that, brother Kevin? The cruel person trouble his own flesh. Exactly what it says. Guess what? You being cruel, you, gonna got, you got some... You got some uh, uh you got some reaping that's gonna come back to you, fall upon your own head. Mm-hmm. And that much less saying cruel, 
But the Lord, it might be ten times worse for the for an individual like that. So you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so and so here that's so so here's a little side note to you. Look, dig deep down inside yourself and look for some kindness. All right. Yes, sir. <laughs> Cause I'm digging myself, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go and ahead and read, God. man. Say what, bro, Kevin? And mercy, God, you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. But go ahead and read, brother. The wicked worketh the deceitful work. Uh huh. But to him that sword righteousness shall be a sure reward. Wait, 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 wait. But to the person that sowed righteousness, they gonna get what kind of reward? A sure, sure. reward. Y'all see that one? Reward. Yeah. But it's sure though. It is sure. I mean, it's huh? not be there. You keep them commandments of God. That's that's the same thing that Jesus told you in Matthew 19 and 17. The man say, What I gotta do to get eternal life? And Jesus say, keep them commandments. Man. And we know keeping the commandments equals righteousness. That's we right. know that. We can read that. And so, huh, bro, Kevin? And some of them blessings, you know. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, on your way to getting that eternal life, the Lord is blessing you and protecting you and keeping diseases and sicknesses away from yes, you sir. all at the same time. Yes, sir. Give me some of that. Give me some mm. of that. Sure, sure with me, you know. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 19. As righteousness tended to life. So he that pursueth evil, pursueth it to his own death. Come on, man. It don't get no more plainer than that, brothers and sisters. That's right, brother. Look, if you pursue evil, evil. you pursue your own death. That's right. You committing suicide mm -hmm. if you have decided to live a life that goes contrary to the word of God. If you decide to live a life that you're going to have a, a, a lifestyle of breaking commandments. You hey. commit suicide, huh? You playing Russian roulette. Go ahead, brother. You done threw that. You done threw a uh, machete uh, boomerang out there, and it's coming right back to cut your head off. Ain't that something, though? Mm. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh... I see it all the time. Brothers and sisters, you might not understand this right now. You might not get it. And but uh, actually, but ask the Lord to increase your fear of him. That's right, brother. And that's going to help you tremendously. Bless double seven. Yes, sir, sister. Ask him to help you fear him more. Because that is what's going to get you afraid to sin against him. Increase and, that fear. And that's what's going to get you to walk right. And that's going to move you out of that lane where you are pursuing your own depth. Brother Todd, can you read that verse one more time? This might be the heaviest verse we're going to read tonight. Just might be. Read that verse one more time, brother. 19. Yes, sir. As righteousness tended to life, uh -huh. so he that pursueth evil pursueth it to his own death. Ooh, wee. To his own death. That's a stinger right yeah. there, man. So, 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 so you, so you will definitely reap what you sow. So now skip on down to verse 25 and continue, brother. The liberal soul shall be made fat mm -hmm. and he that water it shall be watered also himself. You see that? So guess what? If you do some water, then you get watered. So if you do some good, then you receive good. If you do evil, you receive evil. That's right. That's just how it goes. Go ahead and read, brother. That's fair too. Yes, sir. Yeah. It is fair. Because the Lord is like that. He, we've already read that said he hated unjust balance. That's right. right. Huh? That's right. Go ahead and read, brother. He that withhold the coin, the people shall curse him. But blessing shall be upon the head of him that selleth it. You see that? So let's just say you got somebody, they got all this corn, but they don't want to share it to nobody, even if they got to sell it to the people. Hey, you're going to have yourself a problem. But if you sharing, hey, man, you good to go. You supposed mm -hmm. to share. Oh. Hey, I be I be scared not to share the things that the Lord has blessed me with. Sometimes people around me think I'm crazy, doing this and doing that. But hey, man, I be scared not to help people out because hey, man, if you go if you sitting on all them blessings that the Lord gave you, 
man, if you try to sit on that stuff, you don't know when the Lord might snatch that rug from under you. Mm, and right. give and give it to that's somebody right. else who's willing to who help the brothers and the sisters out, okay? Plus I would want I plus I would want that behavior and that treatment for me. Yes, sir. So I'm gonna do it too. I'm gonna put it out there. You know? Because everybody at some point is gonna need some assistance and yes, a helping sir. hand from the brothers mm -hmm. and the sisters. It's mm -hmm. all that simple. So what verse is that, brother Todd? That would be in the 26. Go ahead and read. He that diligently seeketh good, procureth favor. Ooh, you see that? Look, if you if you seeking out the good, then you guess what? You procure favor. But if you seeking evil, man, you chasing your own hmm. death down. You rushing it. <laughs> Go ahead and read. But he that seeketh mischief, it shall come unto him. Boy, I'm telling y'all, this man. Proverbs 11 is so heavy. Ooh. It's so heavy, man. Look, he say, if you seek mischief, mischief going to come to you. Right? That's yes, right. We see that. Then it said, if you pursue evil, you pursuing your own death. Now, evil is just transgressing God's laws. Y'all see that? Then it said, the one that is cruel, trouble his own flesh right right then it said the wicked gonna fall by their own wickedness transgressors gonna be taken in their own naughtiness and then we are reading over and over again but it's just the opposite but a person that does good then good gonna come back to them do y'all see that so look, I got one more spot. Let's go hit Job chapter four. So, so, so what we have been, have been reading in a nutshell, brothers and sisters, you shall reap what you sow. Okay? There's no two ways about it. <clears throat> so you need to be working on getting scraping the cruel off of yourself. Hmm. And you need to be working on chasing down righteousness so righteousness can chase you down Chase down good so good can chase you. Do some good so good can get done to you. Okay? Because when you do wrong, some evil going to fall up on your head. And a lot of time it just fall when you're already going through something already. It just be at the most inconvenient time. Okay? <laughs> That's right, Brother Carlos. Carlos. How can you yeah. do wrong and expect, expect right? right? But people doing it. Yeah, they do this wrong and expect right to me. They don't really believe his word, man. They don't believe that God moved like he moved and roll right. like he rolls. OK, Peter Brown, my brother. Yes, sir. From the New Orleans. OK, this is my last spot before I turn it over to brother Kevin. Job four and verse seven, Job four and seven. What that say, brother? Remember, I pray thee, mm -hmm. whoever perish being innocent. He said, whoever got handled for being innocent, go ahead and read. Oh, where were the righteous cut off? Oh, have you ever seen a righteous person get cut off? Huh? Go ahead and read. Even as I have seen, mm. they that plow iniquity and mm. sow wickedness reap the same. Y'all see that? So Joel said from what he's seen, it's the one that sow and plow wickedness. They're the ones that, that perish and they're the ones that get cut off. Okay, which we've been reading since we started. Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. By the blast of God, they perish. You see that? By the blast of God, that terror that we read about, mm -hmm. they perish. Go ahead and read. And by the breath of his nostrils, mm -hmm. are they consumed. Just like that. Pow. Over with. So, so listen, <laughs> brothers and sisters. We just wanted to lay the groundwork. We wanted to lay that foundation. You shall reap whatever it is you sowing. Okay, and until uh brother Kevin give me that mic back, I'm giving it to him. Okay, what you got, brother Kevin? Okay, uh, let's just move forward and lay some more little groundwork. It's really a simple, simple lesson, mm -hmm. um, but a well needed one, a reminder mm -hmm. for us all. Let's go to Exodus, the 20th chapter. Them great commandments, Exodus, mm -hmm. the 20th chapter. What is more royal and better than this law right here? I don't know not one thing outside of God himself who set this thing up like that. Exodus, the 20th chapter. Exodus chapter 20. We're going to read one verse. 20 and verse 12. Let's focus on even young children, young folks. 
Yes, sir. Let's focus on some of this stuff now. Because sometimes we think, well, it's the parents. Children not exempt either now. Let's, mm. let's show how fair this God really is, okay? Exodus the 20th chapter, let's pick it up at verse 12. This will also motivate and educate us to teach our children mm. so they won't get caught, like the mm. world say, with their pants down. Exodus 20 and verse 12. Go ahead, brother. Honor thy father and thy mother. Wait a minute, now do what? Honor, your Honor father and your thy father and thy mother. And what you gonna get for that? Go ahead. That thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. But James, you got to read a lot of stuff that the Lord say he, you can cut your own self off for. He say, but this right here can add longevity to your life. Mm -hmm. He said, just by honoring your father and your mother. Now, I don't know how, that's a sweet deal right there. Because mm -hmm. quite naturally, when you're raised by your parents, you would want to do that anyway. Right. That's what one would assume. But now, what is there any more in there, Todd? That was the end of 12. Read that one more time, then we're going to move forward. Honor thy father and thy mother. Yes, sir. That thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Notice it didn't say honor your mother and your father. Because some people like twist that thing around. It said honor thy father and thy mother. He even put in some order right there. But now, let's go over to Ephesians, the sixth chapter. Paul going to speak on this thing, and he going to drop a gem on it, too. Ephesians, the sixth chapter, and we're going to pick it up at verse one. Shout out to everybody in the <laughs> chat. Yes. Shout out to my co-workers right here, Brother James and Brother yes, Ty. Sir. Yes, sir. Shout out to Brother Boy. Shout out to the administration office up there, Sister Europa, Shanika, and all the rest of them. Yes. Shout out Shot to me. all my brother. Yes, sir. Shout out to all my brothers that's heads over the camps. All the choir members singing and all the janitors. Everybody that's yeah. out here doing their thing. That's Shout working out in the vineyard. Yes. Yes, sir. Much love in the name of Jesus Christ. Ephesians 6 and verse 1. Go ahead. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Oh, he said obey your parents in the Lord. This is right right here. Go ahead. Honor thy father and mother. Yes. Which is the first commandment with promise. So Moses didn't make no mistake when he said, first, first honor your father and your mother. Exactly. Then he said right here, he said, this is the first commandment with promise. What did it promise you? Long life. So guess what? The Lord said the ball is in your hand mm -hmm. or in your court. Read verse three, brother. That it may be well with thee. That it may be well with you. Go ahead. And thou mayest live long on the earth. Uh-oh. He said you got some long days to look forward to. Hmm. You reaping what you sowing oh, if you do yes, that. So. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Proverbs, the 20th chapter. And verse 11. We're just going to go over and read this 20th chapter. And verse 11. James will tell you. It's so many of these, uh, hey, even Tology, it's so many of these uh, Proverbs. Yeah. You almost can't get out of this book when you start messing <laughs> around with this guy. Right. You want to put a thousand Proverbs in your lesson, but you mm -hmm. can't. That's right. One thing for sure, you got to go in there. Yeah. You be almost trimming it, you know, trying to trim it down. Then you second guess him. Like, well, let me look at this thing again, you know. Mm-hmm. But Proverbs 20 and verse 12. Let's see what they say. On that verse 11. Verse 11, I'm sorry. Verse yeah. 20 and 11, I'm sorry. I'm thinking about Exodus 20 and 12. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. Even a child is known by his doings. Wait a minute. A child is known by his doings. He said, he said even because guess what? The angels were known by theirs. Man was known by his, and now he said even a child is known by theirs. What is the Lord letting us know? That everybody's going to reap what they sow. Yes, sir. Yeah. Go ahead, brother. Whether his work be pure. Yes. And whether it be right. Whether it be pure and whether it be right. What about some that have not grown up with some parenting 
awesome that shoo away the parents and then like uh say hey you know them instructions i don't care nothing about that let's go look at a case in point let's go to second kings the second chapter yeah the lord smack you around the lord smack everybody around that he loves until you say you don't want no more <laughs> <laughs> Are you really in trouble then, brother? Yes, sir, brother. <laughs> Second Kings 2. And we're going to pick it up at verse 22. Now, this is Elisha after he was healing the uh, waters and plus asking the, uh, the Lord to bless him with the same spirit that he had gave Elijah. Because Elijah was going to get retired at this particular point. But uh, go ahead and read verse 22. So the waters were healed unto this day. Yes, sir. According to the saying of Elisha, which he spake. Yes. And he went up from thence unto Bethel. Minding his own business. Let me go leave. And I'm going up to Bethel. Read. And as he was going up by the way, uh -huh. there came forth little children out of the city and mocked Wait. him. Remember, he said children are known too. By the doors. Mm -hmm. By the doors. Now he said, now here go little children. Mm -hmm. Came up the city and they mocked him. They jogged, they they uh railing on him. Go ahead. And they and said unto him, Go up, thou bald head. Go up, thou bald head. Look at him, tell calling the man bald head and go up. Go ahead and read. What happened? And he turned back and looked on him and cursed him in the name of the Lord. No. Yes. And there came forth two she bears out of the wood and tear forty and two children of them. See that? You cut your own lifespan down. Y'all remember that saying, it take a village to raise a child. Listen, you cut your own lifespan down for ill behavior. And the Lord had this written so that we would understand, don't go playing with these people. You never know who might tag you. Right. Mm -hmm. Outside of your parents. Because mm -hmm. if your parents don't teach you or don't deal with you, look, somebody else will. Two she birds came and did their business. Go ahead. And he went from thence to Mount Carmel, and from thence he returned to Samaria. And I always read this, and I say, wait a minute, wait a minute now. Two she birds, 42 children. You had to be froze in order for them birds to get all, every last one of y'all. You had to be shot. All they had to do mm, was yeah. charge the crowd and just run through and tackle everybody. Yeah. Hey, look here, man. If the Lord can speak fish as we can read in Jonah, he can speak bear. <laughs> he can speak That's bear too, man. How else would he, how else would he set him over there? You know right. I mean? Yes, sir. He had to speak that particular language. Mm -hmm. He spoke fish. He <laughs> yep. Let's go forward. Let's go to Titus and let's see what Paul's message was to Titus so that Titus can spread this to the Gentiles whom he was around. Titus chapter 3, pick it up at verse 1. See, you reaping what you saw. That's why I, I watch my mouth, man. Mm -hmm. I can't afford it. You understand what I'm saying? I can't afford it. After this, we're going to turn this right back over to James. Titus chapter 3 and verse 1. We just, like I said, showing you some simple things so that you can understand what this is talking about. Titus chapter 3 and verse 1. What was their mistake, brother? Go ahead. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers. Yes. To obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work. Now, why did he use subject to principalities and powers? Because guess what? These guys are set forth to even deal with you if you get out of line. You see what James did? He complied with the law when the police pulled them over. He ain't say, oh, you just going to stop me because of a license plate thing, man? I don't know nothing about all that. He ain't do none of that. Mm -hmm. He told oh. the man that's what he was going to do. And now he riding with a license plate on the front. Mm -hmm. And he living. Yes, sir. And the police happy that he ain't got to go upside nobody. You understand? Mm -hmm. So read verse 2, brother. What did he say? To speak evil of no man. To do what? To speak, speak evil, evil of, of no, no man. man. And that's what them children did. That's what got them cut down. Go up, go at thou ball head. Watch what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. 
to be no brawlers, but yes, gentle. Sir. Yes. Showing all meekness unto all men. You got to watch out for that, showing all meekness to all men. So guess what? They, they behavior that they saw was they were speaking evil and they didn't have no type of honor. And then guess what they reaped? Death. She bears. That's right. Yep. But let's read that definition. We're going to pass that over to uh, but yeah. but but look, brother Kevin, as we read in Proverbs eleven, it says, "But he that is cruel trouble his own flesh." <laughs> mm -hmm. Them kids was cruel, man. Uh -huh. Trouble they and they troubled themselves. Okay. Uh huh. And them bears got speed, unbelievable speed. Yeah. Don't know nothing about. So go ahead and read that definition for us. Tyree. Reap. Reap. Learn to pronounce verb. Receive a reward, a benefit as a Wait. consequence. So they got a reward and a benefit. This benefit was death unto them because they did something that they shouldn't have, but they sown that bad, they sown that seed, which was ill. Go mm -hmm. ahead. As a consequence yes. of one's own or other people's action. Own or other people's actions, just like James said. That cruel messenger. I mean that cruel message. That was them or that cruel individual. Go ahead. The company is poised to reap the benefits of this investment. Yes, sir. So we understand what this reap means. Mm -hmm. And like James was saying earlier, we understand what that soul means to distribute seeds out there so that you can bring back forth some type of reward, fruit, gain. Mm -hmm. So now mm -hmm. we're going to pass it back over to Brother James. Yes, sir. And just mm -hmm. like me at one time, I had me a nice little garden. So, hey, I sold pepper seeds and I reaped peppers, okay? You sure did, bro. Sold watermelon seed and I reaped watermelon. I fed them good, then I ate good, okay? Mm -hmm. And it looked good, too. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> so that's that's a, a, a surefire way of letting you know you reap what you sow. But if I didn't plant any cabbage, I won't get no cabbage. Right. It's all that simple. So, look. Let's go into Genesis chapter 6. Title of this lesson is, You Shall Reap What You Sow. Let's go Genesis 6, and let's look at something that the Lord did. And let's just put it in perspective and just kind of look at it and uh, toss it around a little bit. See what it tastes like. Genesis 6 and verse 5, my brother, go ahead and read it. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. Mm -hmm. And they Every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Wait a minute. That's kind of sound like today right now. Don't that kind of sound like June 2022? Yes, mm -hmm. sir. <laughs> sound like we live in that. We have come full circle right, right. back to this time, yes, okay? Sir. Yes, sir. So how did that make the Lord feel? Go ahead and read, brother. And it repented the Lord that he mm -hmm. had made man on the earth. Mm -hmm. And it grieved him at his heart. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and, and read. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, mm -hmm. both man and beast and the creeping thing and the mm -hmm. fowls of the air, for it repented me that I have made them. So listen, the birds he got to get rid of and the animals all because of this man. So now let's go into that next chapter, chapter 7, and let's see what he did. Yes, sir. As a as a result of him being uh, repented himself that he had made this man, okay. That's right. So look, uh, let's go to verse eleven, Genesis seven and eleven, brother Ty. Let's see what the result was. Go ahead and read it. In the six hundred year of Noah's life, mm -hmm. in the second month, the seventeenth day of the month, mm -hmm. the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up, mm -hmm. and the windows of heaven were open. Yep. And the rain was up on the earth 40 days and 40 nights. Yes. Y'all see that? So now, so the, the Lord opened up. He opened up the fountains of the earth. So water was coming from under you. And then he had the water falling out the sky. So this earth was getting watered from the bottom and from the top. Okay. Skip on down, my brother, to verse 17 and read that. And the flood was 40 days up on the earth. Mm -hmm. And the waters increased and bear up the ark, and it mm -hmm. was lift up above the earth. 
So here comes the water. The ark lifted itself up above while it floated in that water. Skip down to verse 21 and let's see what happened. Go ahead and read. And dog flesh died that moved upon the earth. Mm -hmm. Both of the fire of fowl and of cattle and of beasts mm -hmm. and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth and every man. Wait a minute. How many men? Every man. Y'all see that, brothers and sisters? So now look, the Lord flooded this whole planet. Now, the people, the people saw Noah building that ark. Yes, sir. And the book says that the people was wicked in everything that they thought about doing, everything that they did. But at no point, and I'm wondering if at any point anybody said, man, I sure definitely wouldn't want to drown. Uh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but that's what they got. They reap wickedness. And that's what they got. They put evil out there and evil came back on them. And everybody died that terrible death of drowning. Because uh, how long you think you can swim? Mm. Huh? That's right. Without, yeah. without, without all your energy just giving out. Some people probably ran to the top of some hills, climbed up to the top of the trees or whatever it is they could do to get to the highest elevation. But pretty soon that was covered up in water too. Yes. So... So, so yeah, Brother Carlos, they thought Moses was crazy building a big boat in the middle of land, you see. But when that water come, I'm sure they was banging on them doors trying to get up in there. Mm -hmm. But at no point did anybody think in their mind as they plowed wickedness, did they ever think that that would be their end, that they would reap that flood coming. You see what I'm saying? Yes, sir. They didn't think that. And just like the people coming when, when it comes down to that lake of fire, ain't nobody saying that's where I want to go. But the bottom line is somebody going there. So now, uh, skip down and read verse 21, my brother. What that say? You want to read 21 again? Or you want oh, just read verse 22. 22. Mm -hmm. All in whose nostrils was the breath of life of all that was in the dry land died. Y'all see that everybody died. But, but how many of them said that's what they wanted? They didn't say that, but that's what they got because they're because that's what they sold and that's what they reaped. So now let's go Hebrews 11. As a matter of fact, let's go Hebrews 11. Ain't nobody thinking about that. Ain't nobody walking around a day like I, I did a lesson in Phoenix titled uh, Free Will Agents. And I asked the audience, I said, has anybody in this room by show of hands ever said they wanted to go to the lake of fire? And nobody raised their hands. Then I asked them if they knew anybody that ever said that. Nope, they ain't never heard nobody say that. I see you trying to smile, Brother Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you didn't say that, and you don't hear nobody say that. Truth of the matter is, somebody's going to end up there. Somebody's going to end up on That's the wrong right. side of prophecy. They're not saying it, but being that the Lord is a just judge and he's a righteous judge and he's righteous in all his works, somebody's wickedness and evil and their works is going to end them over there. They're not, they don't desire to go there, but that's what they are. That's what they're working on earning right now with the things that they do and with the things that they refuse to do. Okay, let's go Hebrews 11 and pick it up at verse 6. 11 and 6, my brother. What that say? But without faith, mm -hmm. it is impossible to please him. Mm -hmm. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. See, if you're going to come to the Lord, you got to believe that he actually exists. And you can't pick and choose the things that you want to believe about him and some stuff that you don't want to believe about him. If you believe him, you got to take that whole package. You got to take that he is great. You got to take that he is terrible. You got to take that he can bless. You have to take that he can punish. You have to take the whole package. You can't just look at it as, oh, he's just so cuddly and love everybody. Because that's a lie. That's a big old lie. So look, finish that verse, brother. And that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. Not the one that halfway seek him, but you have to diligently seek him. You, if you halfway doing it, you're wasting your time. I'm going to say that again. If you're halfway doing it, you're wasting your time. If you halfway seeking the Lord, you're wasting your time. Look, somebody said, that's a powerful reader. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, brother Israel, been Israel. Hey, you preaching to the choir, brother. We know he is, okay? 
The Lord blessed this brother. So look, y'all, you're going to reap what you're sowing, and we looking at it. And, it. and if you believe in the Lord, it's going to drive your behavior. It says if you don't have faith in him, it's impossible to please him because you're not going to do what he say. Okay, but let's look at some examples. Let's skip on down to verse 17, brother Todd. Verse 17, what does it say? By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. Mm. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. See, that says by faith. See, Abraham believed God, so he was getting ready to offer up his son, right? The one that the Lord made promises through. But let's go, let's go try to get some understanding on that. Go ahead and read. Of whom it was said mm. that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Yes. Accounting that God was able to raise him up. Even from the dead. Y'all see that? So listen, if the Lord told Abraham uh, uh, before Isaac was even born that he's going to bless all the earth through Isaac, surely if I go over here and sacrifice Isaac, the Lord is going to wake him back up because he said he was going to do that. He said that Isaac, that the, that the blessing was going to come through Isaac. So surely, being that I believe God and believe in, uh, that he has all power in heaven and in earth, that if I kill my son, the Lord is going to wake him right back up. Clearly. So y'all have to understand Abraham's mindset. That's faith right there. And then we just read by faith he offered his own son he was getting ready to. Okay? Because he believed God. Do you believe him? Do you? Do you really? Go ahead and read, brother. From whence also he received him in a figure. You see that? So skip on down to verse 24 and continue. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, mm -hmm. refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Uh-huh. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God. Yes. Than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Hey, we got to look at that. Mm -hmm. It said Moses could have been sitting on the throne of Pharaoh after Pharaoh's death. OK, at some point, because he was brought up in the Pharaoh's house, but he chose to suffer affliction with his people than to enjoy the pleasures of sin just for a short season. Because as we always say, a moment of pleasure can cause you an eternity of some of some punishment or a lifetime of some pain to go with that. You see, right. So, so Moses chose that. Now let's look at how deep it was. What that next verse say, brother? Esteeming the, the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. Y'all see that? So he said he highly esteemed the reproach of Christ than the riches of the treasures of Egypt. So guess what, brothers and sisters? If you're being reproached, just like Jesus told you in the book of Matthew, he said, you're going to be hated of all men for my name's sake. So if some people hating you, brother, you're doing something right. So so to Moses and, and notice that it said Christ, because we can read that that was Christ back there with Moses in Israel. Can we read that? We can read it. First yes, Corinthians sir. 10. OK. And, and a lot of other stuff tell us that, too. He was the God of Israel. OK. Before he came in the flesh. So it said Moses esteeming the reproach of Christ as greater riches than the treasures of Egypt. Go ahead and read. For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. He had respect unto it and he believed in it, too. Go ahead and read. By faith. <laughs> He forsook Egypt. He forsook Egypt by faith. Go ahead. Not fearing the wrath of the king. Mm -hmm. For he endured at seeing him who is invisible. Y'all, it said Moses mm. endured. And the book tell us he that endured to the end shall be what, brother? Saved. Saved. <laughs> How That's about right. that? And we see that Moses endured. So now, let's go into Revelation chapter 22. Now, this is something that's read in every Israel of God every Sabbath day. Before the lesson gets started. Well, some of this here. But we're going to read it to you in and we're going to read another part to you. Let's go to Revelation 22, Brother Todd. And let's read verse 12 and skip to verse 14. Revelations 22 and 12. And we see red letters so we know what that means. 22 and 12. What that say, brother? And behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. He said, I come quickly and I'm going to give my reward to every man as his works. So you are going to reap what you sow. That's all this is saying. 
according to your works, that's how you're going to be rewarded. And as we read, if you've done evil, you're going to get evil. If you've done good, you're going to get good. Okay. So now skip it. Read verse 14, brother. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life. Yes. And may enter in through the gates into the city. See, so if you're doing those commandments, so if you're doing good, if you if you're doing uh, the righteousness, if you are obeying the word of God, then you will have rights to the tree of life and enter in through the gates into the city. So you you sold good and you're going to reap good. It's all that simple. So now let's go to first Kings chapter nine and look at something. This is uh, Solomon praying to the Lord right here. And the Lord heard his prayer. And responded back to him. And ain't nothing changed. The, <laughs> the Lord said, hey, I am God and I change not. And in Hebrews 13 and 8, it says, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. And then the book say, meddle not with them that are given the change. Don't let nobody trick you into thinking everything that changed up. You better tell them to read it to you. That's the only way we can accept that. Read that to <laughs> yes, me. Right. Okay, First Kings 9 and 1, my brother, what did it say? And it came to pass mm -hmm. when Solomon had finished the building of the house of the Lord. Yes. And the king's house and all Solomon's desire, which he was pleased to do. Mm -hmm. That the Lord appeared to Solomon the second time. Yes. As he had appeared unto him at Gibeon. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said to him, I have heard thy prayer and thy supplication yep. that thou hast made before me. I have hallowed this house which thou hast built to put my name there forever and mine eyes and mine heart shall be there perpetually. So when you whenever you go into an IOG facility and we pray towards Jerusalem, this is why. OK, we face Jerusalem. OK, because the Lord said his heart and his eyes shall be there perpetually. So why not send them over there? We have first Kings nine chapter nine. Uh, 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 Sister Ann Robinson Go ahead and read brother And if thou will walk before me As David thy father walked In integrity of heart And in uprightness To do according to all that I have commanded thee And will keep my statutes and my judgments So the Lord is talking So the Lord is talking to Solomon now He's telling Solomon Hey if you walk in my commandments and in my statutes and judgments with integrity like your dad David did, go ahead and read. Then I will establish the throne of thy kingdom upon Israel forever. Then I will establish that throne forever. Go ahead and read. As I promised to David thy father, saying, uh -huh. There shall not fail thee a man upon the throne of Israel. He said there won't be a time that it won't be a man on the throne of Israel. And as we know right now, ain't no man on the throne in Israel. So clearly Solomon didn't do that side of the if. He's getting ready to do this other. He did this other side we're about to read. Go ahead and read, brother. But if you shall at all turn from following me. He said, but if you shall at all turn away from following me, Solomon, go ahead and read. Ye are your children. You are your children. Go ahead. And will not keep my commandments and my statutes, which I have set before you. Mm -hmm. But go and serve other gods and worship them. What is the Lord going to do as a result? Go ahead. Then will I cut off Israel out of the land which I have given them. Mm -hmm. And this house which I have hallowed for my name will I cast out of my sight. So now hold on right there, brother Todd. So he's saying, he said, he said he's going to cut Israel off from out mm. of the land. Is Israel truly in the land now? No. No. We have been scattered all over planet Earth into the four corners, right? Then he said, in this house, which I have hallowed for my name, I'm going to cast it out of my sight. Hey, listen, they burned that temple down and it's, they tore it down, okay? set fire to it so the, and the lord hey solomon and israel reaped what they sold okay it's all it's straight across the board like that huh bro kevin what say you yes sir okay well, go ahead and go ahead and read brother once it was done <laughs> next minute of the night, it wasn't right exactly go ahead and read and israel shall be a proverb and a byword among all people Listen, and we are among all people, and we are a proverb and a byword. You listen. You call it the N word. You called spook, Negro, black, 
African American, Jamaican, Haitian. They mm -hmm. calling you everything. Yeah. But ain't nobody calling you Israel. And somebody over there done stole your identity, but they don't even use your real your real titles like Israel and Israel. Like they say Israelis and Jews. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So guess what? You are a proverb and a byword. The Lord did take you out of your land. And guess what? And he did have that house torn down that he had hallowed with his name on it. So, so guess what? He kept his word. And guess what? He gave Israel the reaping that they sowed. He gave Solomon the reaping that he sowed and Solomon's children the reaping that they sowed. So all across the board, from the beginning of time all the way down to the end, every man born on this planet is going to reap what he sowed. Everybody. Everybody. What verse was that, Brother Todd? That was the end of seven. Go ahead and read. And that this house, which is high, everyone that passes by shall be astonished mm -hmm. and shall hiss, and they shall say, why have the Lord done thus unto this land and to this house? So everybody that passed by, because because Jerusalem was a great, magnificent place, people. You got to understand when the queen and she became there, she heard the rumors of the, the grandness and the greatness and the wisdom of all and the beauty and the riches of everything was going on there. Then she came and dropped a bunch of riches there. OK, yeah, that's right, brother Virgil. Colored is another one of them bywords and proverbs. So listen. So so so. But go ahead and read, brother. And they shall answer mm -hmm. because they forsook the Lord their God. You see that? That's why this happened. Because they forsook the Lord their God. They turned their back on them. And they are reaping what they sowed. Go ahead and read. Who brought forth their fathers out of the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And have taken hold upon other gods. Yes. And have worshipped them and served them. Therefore have the Lord brought upon them all this evil. You see that? So the mm. Lord brought that evil because they did evil. So whatever you do, that's what you get. Whatever, if you're doing good, you receive good. You do evil, you receive evil. We've been reading that all night. So now let's go to Hosea chapter 10. I got one more spot before I turn it back over to Brother Kevin. Hosea chapter 10, my brother. And we're going to pick it up at verse 12. Listen, Israel, we are reaping what we sow. Okay? It's all that simple. Ain't no big old mystery. It's pretty clear. Somebody called me the other night talking about, well, yesterday talking about we ain't under no curse. Say, man, did you descend from slaves or did you not? You living in a fantasy world, man. I'm telling you, I really don't have time to argue with folks like that, man. I really don't. Mm -mm. But if it wasn't for the sister calling me, I wouldn't even dealt with the brother. You see what I'm saying? Right. But y'all need to get to the point you ain't got to call nobody to deal with these people who don't know no book. What you need to do is come to class. You need to study when you're not at class. And then you need to be able to handle business when you run up on somebody who don't know the book. You should be able to undress them, okay? Right. You should be able to rip their underwear off of them right in front of everybody without calling nobody. All right? So you got to get yourself rooted. If you ain't rooted, leave these people alone. So now. Uh, Hosea 10 and 12 what that say brother so to yourselves in righteousness mm -hmm. reap in mercy yes break up your follow ground mm -hmm. for it is time to seek the Lord it is go ahead till he come and rain righteousness upon you mm -hmm. you have plow wickedness look, look, but look let's look at verse 12 though brother Todd mm -hmm. it said so to yourselves in righteousness Right. And reap in mercy. That's what we've been talking about all night. If yes, you're sir. doing the good things, the good things come back to you. Break up that fallow ground. It's time to seek the Lord till he come and rain that righteousness up on yeah. you. You see? But guess what? But what if it's the other side of the coin? He said, you have plowed wickedness. Go ahead and read. You have reaped iniquity. Yes. You have eaten the fruit of lies. Mm -hmm. Because thou didst trust in thy way. Yep. In the multitude of that mighty men. See, you have trusted in your own way. And you have trusted in the multitude of your mighty men. Go ahead and read. Therefore shall a tumult arise among the people. Yes. And all thy fortresses shall be spoiled. Mm -hmm. As Sham and Spall, Beth Arbel, in the yes. day of battle. Yes. The mother was dashed in pieces upon her children. We go ahead. 
so shall Bethel do unto you because of your great wickedness. Mm -hmm. In the morning shall the king of Israel utterly be cut off. And that's what it was. Even down to when Zedekiah, when Nebuchadnezzar came and took him out, killed his sons and then took his eyesight out and then took him right on up to Babylon in captivity. Okay? And he died there. So, yes, so, so, and, and, and Zedekiah was a wicked brother. Let's, let's go to Galatians to my last spot. Hey man, Jeremiah tried to warn that brother several times. And then he, and then he let, he let them brothers loose on Jeremiah. They was handling the brother rough, man. But, but Jeremiah was the one that got blessed in the end. And Zedekiah was the one that had to suffer. He did evil. Evil came back on him. Jeremiah was doing good. Jeremiah got good. That Babylonian captain let Jeremiah go free. Did he not? You can go read it. Yes, he did. So look. So now let's go Galatians 6. And we're going to pick it up at verse 7. Hey, and Jesus told you, you in John 5. What, go ahead, bro, Kevin. You got a Proverbs 3 after that, dude. You want that still or no? I got a Proverbs 3. 5 through 7, 9 through 10. Hold on. I don't think I have that, bro, Kevin. I got, I got my little raggedy nose. I don't know if you can see him, but here they go right here. <laughs> the scribble, scrabble, chicken scratch. Okay. So now, Galatians 6 and verse 7. Galatians 6 and 7, brother Todd. Go ahead and read that. Be not deceived. That's God right. is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth. Yeah. That shall he also reap. Hey, look, that's plain and simple right there. Yeah. Whatever, whatever you sow, brother and sister, that's what you reap. Go ahead and read. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. Yeah. But he that soweth to the spirit mm -hmm. shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Go ahead. And let us not be wary in well doing. That's right. For in due season we shall reap. If we faint not. See that? You mm. see that? So he said, he said, don't get tired of doing good. I know sometimes uh, it might have you to, to really exercise a whole lot of a whole lot of discipline for yourself in order to, to continue walking right. But but don't get tired of doing right, brothers and sisters. And then if you do get tired, ask the Lord to make you scared. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if you increase your fear, you're going to keep doing them right things. You won't get tired. But listen, I, I adjusted my, um. before I get Brother Kevin, I'm going to give you the mic. But I just want to show the people, our graphics team, we got these new flyers right here. Watch this here, people. Look, they fit right in my pocket. See that? And all you got to do is... No matter what class that you're in, all they got is just the front side of it. And this QR code right here, it takes you right to the IOG website, which, by the way, looks like we spent $2 million on that website. It's it's mm. crazy. for it's, yeah. it's awesome, okay? And then we just got to be showing the people that we teach all kind of stuff over here at the IOG. Y'all see that? Yeah. And then it just, at the bottom, it just got a... Uh, our location, what time, and our contact information. So this can be used at any IOG class. Just change the stuff at the bottom, what time y'all meet, your address, what city, and then a phone number, something like that. Then on the back side, we just got a couple of little questions on there. You see that? Let me see. These questions, and, and then they got a scripture to answer the question. See that? Mm. Y'all see that? And then over here, you got a QR code right here that takes you straight to one of them lessons Brother Bowie did titled uh, a, 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 a Sound Doctrine Replaced by Fable. So these are some good flyers. I'm telling you, no matter what class you in, these are good. And it's just good to just have them in your pocket because no matter where you go, no matter where you are, you can just hand somebody one and they can immediately put their phone on them codes and it'll take them to a YouTube video, mm -hmm. take them to the website. And uh, they're great to have. They stick, they fit right in your pocket. And then boom, 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 you give them to somebody. They don't have to frisbee because it's so big. They can stick it in their pocket. Nice chance of them, nice chance of that card going home with that person, okay? Right. Pocket size three by five. So I just want, because we one big old family, I just want y'all to know no matter where you are, you can get some of those flyers. Every location should be getting them. 
uh, I know, I know, I got them. I know, uh, right. they were sent to you, brother Kevin, brother Todd. Did you send the graphics team request for yours yet? Request for yours no, yet? No, I'm gonna put that in. Though. Okay, got yeah. To so, have yeah. So, uh, sister Teresa, I know we gonna have. I'm gonna hand them out at the Bay Area tomorrow for our for our class. So they really good to have. I caught the train. I caught the train today to the airport, um, to go pick up this little rental. And, uh, hey, man, I met a sister there, gave her one. We chopped it up. I gave another brother one, you know, mm -hmm. on the way there. So they real nice to have. They real convenient. You can just drop them, spit a couple words, and then run out of there, okay? But anyway, uh, Brother Kevin, what you got, brother? Uh, the same scripture I accused you of having. Let's go to Proverbs, the third chapter. Mm-hmm. So that was yours. <laughs> <laughs> DJ Brother Kevin, super producer. <laughs> My bad, y'all. We all mess up. No, no, no. That wasn't no mess up. Hey, I could have done it. You want me to run it? I'll run it. Put him up there on the screen. You want me to run the Brother Kevin? Because <laughs> they, like they, they look like they got some heat with them, okay? Yeah. It's just a little small tie-in. Okay. To add to something that you was pointing out earlier. Proverbs, the third chapter. Let's pick it up at verse 5. Proverbs 3 and verse 5. Go ahead and read when you get it, brother. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Yes, sir. And lead not unto thine own understanding. Should you be making decisions without trusting in the Lord and, and, and following his instructions? No, indeed. Go ahead. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. Yep. And he shall direct thy paths. Yes, sir. Sounds be, to me. Go ahead. Right. Be not wise in thine own eyes. What? Fear the Lord and yes. depart from evil. The same first James was just talking about. Ask for fear. Skip down to verse 9, though. Let's look at something else. Honor the Lord with thy substance. Yes. And with the first fruits of all thine increase. Yep. So shall thy bonds be filled with plenty. Yep. And that press it shall burst out with new wine. Yes. So now, look at what the Lord just said now. He said, honor the Lord with, the, with thy substance and the first fruit of our increase. Listen, make sure the Lord said, make sure you give me my offers. Make sure you give me my time. Yes, sir. Word. Even in that, mm -hmm. you're going you gonna to get, you get your reaping based off what you sow. This is what the Lord is telling us here. He said, uh, so shall thy bonds be filled with plenty, and thy press thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Sometimes people be wondering, hey man, I got this degree, I got this skill, I got that trade. Why I want hey, why this money ain't coming through like I want it to come through? Sometimes you gotta watch out for this thing. Let's go to Second Corinthians. Hey, 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 look, bro, Kevin. See, 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 uh uh uh, uh people gonna wanna People going to want uh, to get into the Lord's kingdom, but they they haven't done, they ain't shared none of their stuff with the Lord. You see what I'm saying? Or with his people. Right. They they do what they do, keep it to themselves, and then they be then they going to wonder why they ain't got nothing coming. Right. You you got to put something in to get something out. Yes, sir. And don't, don't make no mistake about it. The Lord don't need your money, partner, sister, brother. The Lord don't need your money. He's looking for your obedience and your belief in him and your righteousness. That's what he's looking for. Yeah. He don't need your money. Don't get it twisted. Mm, right. Okay. Yes, indeed. Cooperation. What you going to do, man? Yeah. Second Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 6. Go ahead and read them to uh, verse for me, brother. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. Yes, uh, and he which sow it bountifully shall reap also bountifully. The Lord said, "If you do that, this is how it's gonna come back to you." Go ahead and read. Every man according as he purposed it in his heart. Wait a minute, according as you purpose it in your heart, what else? Right. So let him give. Give. Not grudgingly. Whoa. Or that's of this. That's the key right there. Not grudgingly. Mm -hmm. or, or of what, brother? Or of necessity. Like you forced. Right. You, you got a choice. Go ahead. For God loveth a cheerful giver. Oh, the Lord 
Lord say, when you drop that money, I want to make sure that it's you cheerful about this thing. That's right. Listen, he said, we in captivity because we didn't serve him with joyfulness of heart and so on and so forth. In Deuteronomy 28 chapter. Mm -hmm. So here goes some old joy that we should be serving the Lord in. But now let's move forward. Let's go to uh, Acts the 20th chapter. Paul was getting ready to depart, but he had a message for these people. He said, the second I leave, you're going to have some grievous wolves coming in. You're going to have some brothers and sisters trying to raise up disciples unto themselves, which sounds very familiar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Acts the 20th hey. chapter. Uh, hey, bro, Kevin. Yes, sir. We still got them grievous wolves. <laughs> 2,000 years later, grievous wolves still running around here. Uh, I knew he was going to catch on. Catch that one time. Mm -hmm. Acts chapter 20 and verse 33. Go ahead. I have coveted no man's silver, or gold, or apparel. Listen, I ain't. He said, I didn't break the commandments. I didn't covet or lust or desire for your stuff. Go ahead. Yeah, you yourselves know. That these hands have ministered unto my necessity. He said I had a job. I was a tent maker. Go ahead and read. And to them that were with me. Yes. I have showed you all things. Yes. How they're so laboring ye ought to support the weak. Wait a minute. So you go to work to not be selfish? Hmm. Right. Yeah, he said to yeah. support the weak. Go ahead. And to remember the words of the Lord Jesus. Which? How he said. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Now, why yes, you, sir. Baby, yeah. That means you got it to give if you're going to be blessed to receive, to, uh, mm -hmm. to give than to receive. You shouldn't always have your hand out. You should be ready to distribute to somebody else. And guess what? That's where that blessing going to come from. Let's go to Ecclesiastes, the 11th chapter. Ecclesiastes, chapter 11. I don't want to hear nobody telling me, oh, you ain't got to keep no, you ain't got to deal with no ties. That's cows. That's goats. That's milk. That's milk from your land. That's all it. Look, somebody don't understand what the books say. That's why I came from Proverbs, the third chapter, as opposed to going to Leviticus, because he told you to honor the Lord with all your substance, no matter what it is. Because you ain't just, you ain't got cows today where well, you got them, but you ain't sure, you ain't breaking them off no chickens and, you know, no hogs or nothing like that. You ain't doing none of that. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 and verse 1. Read that verse for me, brother. What it say? Cast thy bread upon the waters. Yes. For thou shalt find it after many days. What he tell you to do? Cast your bread upon waters. Right. And you're going to find it after many days. It seemed like a long time, but with the Lord, he bring that money right back around. You didn't sow, you didn't reap what you didn't sow right there. Let's go to Matthew, the 25th chapter. Plain and simple. Do that. Yes, sir. Matthew chapter 25. This is what James was just stressing to y'all before he turned it over to me. Matthew chapter 25. And pick it up at verse 31. 25 and verse 31. His throne is on the earth. Let's see what he's finna do right here. Go ahead. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory. Yes, sir. And all the holy angels with him. He got a whole bunch of holy angels with him. Go ahead. Then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. Yes. And before him shall be gathered all nations. Yes. And he shall separate them one from another. Yep. As a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. Wait a minute. Israel. He mm -hmm. said, all nations, that includes you. Mm -hmm. Why you keep talking about the <laughs> white man and Esau and all of this type of stuff? Mm -hmm. You're going to be gathered together too. What are you going to say? And he shall set the sheep on his right hand. Yes, sir. But the goats on the left. Yes. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand. What? Come, ye blessed of my father. Yes. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Oh, mm. you've been doing all this because you've been you've been sowing, and now it's time to reap that which you sowed. Go mm -hmm. ahead. For I was in hunger, and yeah. you gave me meat. Yes, sir. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. Hey, that's what James is pointing out, and now the Lord is showing us again. Go ahead. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Yes. Naked, and you clothed me. Whoa. 
I was naked and you clothed me. Go ahead. I was sick and you visited me. Yes. I was in prison and you came unto me. Everybody knows somebody in prison and they trying and they striving. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Then shall the righteous answer him saying, Yes. Lord, when, Lord, when saw we thee in hunger yes. and fed thee yep. or thirsty and gave them drink and gave thee drink. When did we see you doing this? We didn't see you doing <laughs> yeah. that. Mm -hmm. But look at what he finna say. Go ahead. When saw we be a stranger and took thee in, yes. or naked and clothed thee, Go ahead. or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee, Go ahead. and the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Oh, just like when he came to Paul and told him, listen, he asked him, why, in other words, when he was uh, persecuting the church, he told him, why was you kicking against the bricks? But, you up here was, you was taught, you was, you was torturing me. And you right. Didn't even know mm -hmm. He story. told him, he said, he said, you persecuted me. <laughs> yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Oh, Saul, so, Saul, so why persecutest thou, thou me? Thou me, yes, sir. Don't you got some, don't you got some, uh sore feet by now kicking mm -hmm. against the bricks go ahead right then shall he say also unto them on the left hand yes depart from me cursed into everlasting fire prepare yes. for the devil and his angels go ahead brother. for i was in hunger and you yes. gave me no meat that's right i was thirsty and you gave me no drink yeah i was a strange and you took me not in yes naked and you clothed me not that's right. sick and in prison you visited me not. Yeah. Then shall they also answer him saying, Lord, when saw we thee in hunger, or a thirst, or a strange, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee. Then shall he answer them saying, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And guess what? Believe it or not. That's still a paycheck because you did so something, but it was to yourself. Mm -hmm. Now the Lord said, I hope you hadn't ate and filled and was very uh, uh, comfortable in your life because that's your reward right there. Mm -hmm. And he told him, he told him, uh, uh, he gave us that parable about that man who was talking about turning down his barns and building mm -hmm. more and all this, mm -hmm. that, the third. And the mm -hmm. Lord said, man, he called him a fool. He said, yo, your soul is required this night, man. Do you mm -hmm. know that? Go ahead and read. What else? And these shall go away into everlasting punishment. Yes. But the righteous into life eternal. That's right, brother. There go that paycheck. Hmm. That's what you've been sowing for all the time. Go ahead. That That's was the it. end of 46. That was it. Yeah. So you see the wicked got what they wanted. They sold for what they wanted. And you mm -hmm. see the righteous soul for what they wanted. So mm -hmm. just like James like to always say, and it's the truth, especially when you look at it that way, you worked hard to go into the lake of fire. You really did. Mm -hmm. You really was blood, sweat, and tears. And the ones that get that crown, they work very hard to get there. And he go he go reward you uh, justifiably, okay? Yes, sir. <laughs> you getting your just reward. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, you started out and used, let's go to Hebrews 6. You used uh, that Second Corinthians where we got to come before the judgment seat of Christ. As the mm -hmm. book said. Mm -hmm. And say so we supposed to, because we know the terror of the Lord, we supposed to warn men about this. Thing. Ooh, persuade them. Persuade them as Get well. your house in order. Yes, sir. Hebrews 6, and we got one more after this. 6, and pick it up at verse. 10 we be so sidetracked thinking that this may not happen hmm. sisters and brothers this right here will happen go ahead and read for god is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love yes which you have showed toward his name yes in that you have ministered to the saints and yes. do minister oh there you go with that song there uh, that uh, uh see right there yep church always like to say that so a seed so a seed yeah. <laughs> they be wanting your money when they say that. 
Right, they don't understand what's going on, but go ahead. Right. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence. Yes. To the full assurance of hope unto the end. Yeah, because you got something to read. Go ahead. That ye be not slothful. Yes. But followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Ooh, yeah. yeah. They, they, faith and patience, ain't what he said? Yes, sir. What was they go, they go, they go reap them promises because they, because they sold for it. Okay. Yes, yes, sir. Let's go to our last spot. Let's go to Psalm 126. Psalms 126. See, this thing is simple. That's all. It's real simple. That's why we fighting. We fighting ourselves. That's why no matter how many uh, different tasks James, Todd, and myself have, mm -hmm. we still making it over on Friday night. That's right. Stumble right on in there at the last minute. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Sometimes it be 529, 729. We in like, here, though. Like, like it was. <laughs> yes, sir. Overtime, you right. know what I'm saying? <laughs> 126 and pick it up at verse 1 126 and 1 let's look at something else he finna say go ahead when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion yes we were like them that dream wait a minute ain't that what James pointed out earlier when he first started with Daniel yeah he was showing right. the captivity of the people mm -hmm. so now the Lord returned in captivity he said it's like a dream you know how it is when you had that dream. It was so good and you want to go back to sleep to it. Yeah. Go ahead and read. Then was our mouth filled with laughter. Yes. And our tongue was singing. Yes, sir. Then said they among the heathen. Yeah. The Lord have done great things for them. Go ahead and read. The Lord have done great things for us. Yes. Whereof we are glad. That's right. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. He said, as the streams and the south, go ahead. Mm -hmm. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Whoa, look at that, y'all. He said, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. And guess what? That's like the one he was talking about, the one that had the writer's ink horn. In Ezekiel said, chapter 9. Yes, sir. That, that, it took me straight there, brother Kevin. It took yes, me straight sir. there. Because he said, listen, you see all this abomination and you sorrow in it for this thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why the Lord told us. He said, "Laugh now, but you will weep later." And yep. the ones that's weeping now, they gonna laugh later. So have your fun, because the Lord is gonna turn this thing around and give everybody according to their paycheck. So now He said, "They that sow in tears shall reap in joy." That's all of us, sisters and brothers, and we hope, pray. And stand firm that we get our crown, man. That's what we waiting on. And yes, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I hope y'all got something from it. Yes, and I'm going to turn it back over to my co-workers. Yes, sir. Hey, I see here Sister Tiffany Newton say she appreciate our diligence. You know, our faithfully yes, they're, they're showing up in here every Friday night. Yes, sir. And, and oh, yeah, man, that one was, uh, that one was. Hey, I was looking forward to I was telling Brother Jeff in Birmingham, I was talking to him earlier today uh, about this lesson right here. But look uh, to the Cleveland family. I'll see y'all next month if the Lord say the same. It'll be my first time going to teach at the Cleveland camp. And uh, for all the Houston people, I will be with you all, uh, Lord willing, next Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and by the way. Uh, we got this feast coming up Sunday, the Feast right. of Pentecost. So we have a double Sabbath weekend, brothers and sisters, and we hope everybody have a great one. In fact, we got a brother coming down from, from Seattle. Oh, uh, wow. He's coming down to do the double Sabbath with us. Praise God. Praise God. Um, yes, sir. So, so, yeah, man. So we, it, this is going to be a great, fantastic weekend as this is probably the best weekend every year right here because mm -hmm. it's always that back-to-back -back sabbath okay right yes. but uh but yeah brother kevin what i liked about this lesson is is that we showed oh yeah sister tiffany brother brother john coming down from uh seattle i when i i was asking him if he knew of anybody else up there that was uh you know was 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 uh, walking in this word like this, and he said he didn't know of anybody. And uh, I kind of I mentioned you to him, so at some point, uh, your household and his household can uh, can get together, and uh, I'll see about connecting y'all. Okay. Um. 
Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, so this lesson, brothers and sisters, was titled "You Shall Reap What You Sow." What we have to do is we have to continuously look at ourselves. And we have to build up our faith and our belief in his word. And if you want your faith built up, the Lord will help you build it up. Mm -hmm. He'll help you get, get yourself right with him. Cause, cause, because the more you want it, the more he'll start dealing with you real quick. And the, the best way I've learned to get my faith built up is if I cut out a line, the Lord weigh in on me right away and make it real uncomfortable. Okay? And when you get tired of being uncomfortable... By the person who can bring uncomfort, discomfort perfectly. Then you start doing your stuff right. Fall in line real quick. Mm -hmm. Then you fall in line. Then you fall in line. Brother Julius, we see you, Israel. I was on with you and Brother Dre Doak last night, Brother Julius. Yeah, yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely a great lesson, man. Great lesson. Hey, hey, brother, brother Todd was saying how they gonna be up at the class up in Baton Rouge all day. <laughs> hey, so people probably go check in. They gonna probably check in Saturday night, stay all night. <laughs> man, we started last night. We was up there setting up for the feast. You know what I'm saying? We was up there till about eleven o'clock last night. We even fired the grill up. While we were decorating, man. That's a blessing, brother. Brother yes, Kevin, sir. we got to get you down to Baton Rouge. We, we, we need to start working on that right now. Yes, sir, brother. We got to call Brother Yama to get that going, okay? Yes, man, sir. Look, brother. it ain't nothing like being amongst hey, your brothers and sisters. Yes, sir. I love it, brother. I love it. Antoinette Simpson, I think she's in Cleveland. Sharon, uh, Sharon, okay. uh, Sharon Christian Harmon. St. Louis. Oh, she's in. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, she got baptized. Her and her husband got baptized not too long ago. Oh, okay, she praise did. God. Okay, what about Sabrina Jones? Where is she at? Great lesson. Oh. What you saw? Zakia Israel. Mm -hmm. Everything fee. That's Sister Felicia. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> hey, Sister Felicia. The queen of macaroni and cheese. Okay. Oh, really? Oh man, mm, oh, yeah. Lisa can cook, man. She can cook. Sister Fee, have that brother Rick, brother Kev ready. Yeah, sister, <laughs> throw down, man. <laughs> oh, uh, sister, brother Virgil, say how can he get some of those cards? Um, you would probably have to call the office in Riverdale, brother, and see uh, and see if they uh, and see if it's okay for uh. If you can get the graphics team to send you some without an address or phone number on it, you can just put maybe you can put Riverdale's address and phone number on there uh, to the office. They, they'll probably send you uh, one like that. If they get some made and printed, you can probably request that they send you a few. Or, uh, matter of fact, if you uh, inbox me, I can send you some of some of ours. You know. It'll have the Oakland address and it'll have my phone number on it, but uh, it'll still you can still kind of hand them out and then people will have uh, access, uh, it quick quick reference uh, codes to get to the website and to a brother boy video. Okay. Yeah, some great, we we mm -hmm. have some great cards, brother. Yeah. We, like let me see. Uh, let me let me turn off my background and show them to the people one more mm -hmm. time. I, I wish we had to put it up on this thing, James. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we, we should have. Where did they go? It's in my pocket. Oh, okay. Load that, load that Here they go. This is what the front of them look like. See that? Can y'all see that? Hold on. I haven't done it yet. Okay. Yeah, this is what the front of them look like. See that? Uh, Israel of God. And they tell you, hey, we teach all this mm -hmm. stuff right here. And so that QR sure. code takes you straight to the website and the website has been upgraded it is it is top shelf yeah, okay yeah. Yeah. and then this is the back of the flyer okay right here this qr code take you to a lesson brother Bowie did called uh sound doctrine replaced by fables 
Hey, Sister Mary Scott Macklin, I'll see you in Cleveland next month, sister. No doubt. The Lord say the same. I'll be there. We'll be there. And here's the back. And y'all see how these flyers got a question on it? And then it's got the Bible answering that question. It says, who is our Passover? On the one, Brother Todd, you remember the ones we had in Baton Rouge? It was multiple choice. Yeah, like I would put yeah. multiple choice on that. Like I would say who was like on this on this question it says uh what name should you be baptized in? I had a multiple choice. I right. had A Solomon, B Jesus, uh C Father, Son, Holy Ghost, D Moses. You see what I'm saying? Uh -huh. And then the people the and, and all the way we put the questions on there, people felt like they knew the answer. But but the way they would the way the questions were, the people never knew the answers. But they, but they thought they did, and right. then we we say, well, look at what that verse say right there. You see, mm -hmm. and then you showing them right out the gate that the Bible has the right answer, and maybe what somebody told you or tradition, tradition is wrong, and what somebody told you is wrong. The let let God be true and every man a liar. You see that? That's right. Zakia, Zakia Israel, can I uh, can I message you on Facebook? Yes, send me an inbox me on Facebook, uh, brother Julius. I got you, brother. Let me see. Raleigh, North Carolina, and Greenville, North Carolina. <laughs> yes, yes. Great lesson tonight, Brother Kevin. What you got to say on those, on that piece? Hey, you man. shall reap what you sow. Like I told you uh, before we did it, I said I'd be loving them titles you, you, that you, uh, the ones you throw out there, because it make me, it make me work. Go <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro, Kevin, yeah. I put that one on the list, but never laid anything to it. You see what I'm saying? So when you sent me that text, I just went to the list and say, okay, any minute, mighty mo, let's go with this one. Once you said, okay, this will go, that was it. So I kind of thought about it for a couple of days before I sat down on it. Yeah, yeah. I did too. But like uh, when I when I actually got the title. Yeah. I waited for a day before I messed with it. I said, okay. So somebody had a question up here, bro. Kevin, did you see it? Oh, brother Drake Middleton, he said he drove to Dallas so he can have the double Sabbath with the people in Dallas. Hey, praise God, brother Drake. Hey, man, listen. Make sure you go meet brother Troy. And, uh, and when you get in there, brother Drake, are you still on here? When you get in there, look for the sheriff. <laughs> yes, hey, bro, I'm All not gonna even go. tell, I'm not gonna even tell go. you that is, brother Drake. When you get in that Dallas class, say I need to see the sheriff. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Police the joint. Too. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> if your kids out of line, they gonna get corrected at Dallas camp. Okay. <laughs> yes, sir. Let me see. <laughs> Somebody had a question on there, bro, Kevin. I think. Uh, Let me see. I'm Kaya trying. Israel had one. Uh, I just saw a question on there. Uh, something about should you feed the sick or something like that? Is that required? Oh, what's really? that? I just saw that. I missed it. Oh, uh, yeah, me too. Okay, I see it. It says, "Does the Lord require us to do all those or some?" Example, visit the sick. Hey, I'm not saying that it's required, but it, hey, if you know of some people, why not? Mm -hmm. I remember for at one point when I was still in the Chicago area, man, on the Saturday, man, me and my son used to go to this uh to this nursing home out there in Hazelcrest on the 183rd, man. Read the book to some old cats and there, old Gentiles, man. 
Mm-hmm. You know, and my son was a little boy, but he's going there and read for me. He was about 10, 11. You see what I'm saying? But, uh, but hey, man, if you know of some people, hey, go do it. Nursing homes are good places to go. Mm-hmm. I think the brothers in Atlanta, uh, they 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 do that quite a bit. I know I remember a time in the past they were doing it. I don't know if they still. Brother Ezra, you still on there? Does ATL brothers go to these nursing homes? Somebody else had another question. I can't find it. That's a good place to go. They can't run nowhere from you. Right. Yeah, because we set up to go uh, next month and do, oh, some, yeah? uh, do some things. Yeah. Okay. And 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 then if y'all know a brother that, or a sister that's security guard, hey, drop one on them. They can't move. Okay. Yeah. You're going. You're going. Sitting? Huh? When that security guard early you ran through when I was talking with you. When you were running, when I was talking to you, you you said, "Hey, brother, check this out." He I think that call. was. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He, yeah. Take yeah. a call. <laughs> yeah, he a security guy at this store, cookies, man. Yeah. So, yeah. uh, yeah. Cynthia Moore, thank you, sister. We appreciate that support. We really do. Mm-hmm. I can't find the question, okay. but. Uh, but uh, but anyway, uh, brothers, if that's it, we got we got a double Sabbath coming in. Uh, I still got a little preparation, a little time I can do some prepping because this is a preparation life. Okay. Yeah, Virgil Israel actually views on Messenger. Yeah, on Facebook, yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's time for me to go. Uh, uh mm-hmm. get my. <laughs> Come with shelter, yes, sir. Father, listen, laid all the way out. Yeah, you teaching yeah. them all, bro, Kevin? Yes, sir. Okay. Hey, Godspeed mm-hmm. on it. So am I. I got a little something, something to do here, and Bye, then, uh, and hey, man, I, I hope the Lord is with us all. Yes, sister. So on that note. Thank you, brother Jeff. Brother Jeff in Birmingham. <laughs> man, them my them my brothers down there, brother Todd. Man, I miss going to Birmingham. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Birmingham was fun, man. I enjoyed it. One day we was sitting, we was sitting down in Baton Rouge, and Todd say, "Todd remind me of a time and I was teaching in uh, <laughs> Birmingham, brother Kevin." <laughs> brother Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> the, the brother ran out the building, brother, <laughs> to the parking lot. You know what I'm saying? Oh, oh man. I was being but, over. I was being over dramatic. Grabbed his Bible, his bag, and hit the and was out the door. Everybody looking at me. <laughs> and then, bro, Kevin, when he walked in, he said, "Bro, Ty, where we at?" <laughs> Oh, just being over dramatic, man. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. anyway, hey man, we need to get off Sharon Christian Harmon. A happy Sabbath to you and everybody else. Teresa Hannah Stuckey. Hey, this is a great weekend, people. Go have that Pentecost feast. If you right. preparing something for the feast, put all the love and your best effort into it. Go hang out with your with your spiritual family. Have the greatest family reunion that you can have. And uh, be married before the Lord and enjoy yourselves and enjoy each other. Okay? Yes, sir. And That's don't true. allow anybody to bring no negative energy into, into y'all's places, your different places where you are. Okay? That's right. Okay? This is a time that you really enjoy yourself. See, yes. y'all know what it's like when y'all used to do Christmas. Y'all understand mm-hmm. what I'm saying? You're supposed to do these feasts of the Lord like that. Mm-hmm. You're supposed to come together. You're supposed to not let anything cause you to miss it. If 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 you can if you can be there, be there. Right. Be there for your the brother. Lord. Yes, yeah. sir. Delight in being there. And you can get your battery charged up on the Pentecost weekend, I'm telling you, huh? Man. You can get your gas tank filled and your battery charged. Okay? And I'm... Yes, sir. I remember six years ago where we was all at. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Riverdale, yeah, yeah. 
Pentecost 2016. Yes, sir. That was a landmark date, brother. I mean, that was landmark. Everybody in the house, you know what I'm saying? Yep. I remember the, the Kalamazoo family came and showed up on a bu- on their buses. Uh, the Jackson camp came. It was a lot of everybody yeah. there. Memphis was there. Brother Garvin. Uh, man, everybody came. Man. The uh, uh, brother Anthony and sister uh, Marcia from Alaska. Everybody man. was represented and was there. Man. It was a beautiful thing to see all Israel in there like that, man. Man, even uh. Brother from Zimbabwe. Hmm. Yeah, it it was it was crazy in there. I met uh, Amari Stoudemire that day. Took a picture hmm. with him. Yeah, he was there too. Mm-hmm. So uh, it was great, man. I took a lot of pictures. I think on on the Sabbath day, I th- I walked three point three miles in in just inside the building, and on Pentecost I walked three point one miles in there. I was like a baby in the candy store, kid in the candy store, man. Look at Sister Cynthia oh, yeah. Moore. She said, "Yes, it was. Yes, law. Hey, man, it was. So, it was thousands of people right. in there. I think they estimated six or seven thousand. There were more people in there than them. Yeah, it was packed on both sides. In there. You ain't counting Israel, man. Yeah, man. Brother Thomas Shelton, wasn't that a weekend, brother? <laughs> yeah." Hey, it wasn't even, hey, man, listen, I don't even think I ate. Uh, we we brought snacks because we know the lines be long to go. You know what I'm saying? It take a long time to get in the line and go kill so many people there. Hey, man, we had a backpack full of snacks and food. That was a blessing to be amongst all the brethren and the sisters. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Brother Noel Berry. Well, look, uh, safe travel to you, brother. Enjoy yourself bro, with Brother Pat and him over there in Jackson. Say hello to Sister Danny's for me when you get there. And the rest of them. UK, yeah. What's Sabrina Flowers say? She said she was there, too. The UK was there, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. UK was there. Mm-hmm. Look, Julius... Julius was there. I think I took a picture with Julius. Julius said he cried that day. He said, bro, man, cried. <laughs> oh, she said her and her husband got baptized that day. It was their first, first time. time there. Yeah, it was a long, that baptism lasted a while. But I was still moving around, chopping it up, talking to everybody. You know, it, it was, it's always great to be in the big house. Um, But anyway, man. If y'all don't mind, we're going to go ahead and shut it down, Brother Kevin. Yes, sir. I got to move toward the kitchen right about now. Yep, it was a beautiful day. Pentecost 2016. Mm-hmm. I wonder I wonder if I still got this picture. I took a I took a I took a panoramic photograph, y'all, of that day. And and it showed you the whole building. With all those people in oh there it is right there. Brother Kevin, I'ma go I'm gonna put this picture up so everybody can see it. Hold on, I'ma go into the uh I'ma go I'ma come into the stream yard thing and put this picture up there. So look oh look look what sister Angela said. Yeah, several marriages came out of Pentecost twenty sixteen. Brother Josh, right. yes sir. Oh, man, man. Let me see. I'm going to put this picture up there, Brother Kevin. Let me see. Stream yard. I'm going to put it in the thing so it can be added up to the to the screen so everybody can see this uh this panoramic view from that day. Put this up there.
All right, here it goes. I took a lot of Mm. So y'all can see that picture, but hey, James, I remember saying that. Ain't that on uh, yeah. Facebook somewhere? I don't know. I think I jacked you for that and put it on our website. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cause you you uh you had pictures everywhere. You went uh, picture crazy. I said Giants got all the good pictures. Yeah, somebody <laughs> you go on Facebook the other day. Sister said she got a 2016 DVD. Oh, okay. It's Teresa says she got it too. Got yeah. It mm -hmm. What a blessing. Yes, it is a blessing. The Lord is merciful, man. The Lord is our God, bro. Brother Kim, Brother Kim, how they get how how's Brother everybody Kim, how getting this get, picture? How, how's everybody getting this picture? Word. When when I took the picture with my camera, when I took my cause when you uploaded it, we just go over there and snatch it. Sure, mm, okay, that's what I do. Mm, okay, I go right and jack that mug. Thank you. Mm. For some reason, they won't let us upload For some that picture. Reason, but, they won't uh, let us upload that picture. But, uh, oh, I don't hear it. Won't. Huh? We got to find huh? a way to get it. We got to find a way to get that on her so we can have that as a memorial. Uh, uh, big time. You know, our one time when we was all together. Collectively. Right. Somebody. Right. Uh oh. Uh oh. But um, let me see. Let me I'm see. I'm trying to figure out how to get out of here from I'm my phone. To out, get out of here from my phone. Let me see. I know that's right, brother Thomas Shelton. Just wait until it look look what it look like in the wilderness exactly. Right. To my sight, boy. Woo. And he said, um. Yes, sir. He, he said somebody said seven hundred parking spaces got filled up that day. Yeah. Let me see. What did they say? Was, yeah. Brother Julius. Give it to brother Thomas Darnell so he can put it in the you know, new website. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. But uh, you know, Fred Haley was up in that sound booth, and I went up there with him and Brother Rob, and I just took that panoramic view. Then another time, I went up the next day. Um, uh, Brother Daniel, Brother Andrew's son was up there, and I just stood up and I just took that panoramic. It was awesome. Yeah. What did uh Mom the e bear say? Oh yeah, she said give it to Brother Tom. Yeah. But I have a ton of those pictures. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. My sister right there in Phoenix. <laughs> Look, man. Uh, sister Gracie. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, that day was something. It was just something to behold, man. I'm telling you, brother, brother, brother Todd, when I was down there a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Um, we brought up the 2022 thing up there in Riverdale. Mm -hmm. Remember when we went by Mark's house that day? 
Oh yeah, yeah. And we and we asked Mark about it, and immediately his eyes started, started wall- tearing up. watering. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, man, that stuff moves people, man. It does. To see all those people that's doing this thing, but it's different when you just living your your normal everyday life out here, and you going to work, you going to the store, you going to CVS, and you know going to the grocery store, and 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 and, and where you're like the one percent, or you're the two percent, where nobody lives this spiritual life that you're living. They don't have the knowledge and the understanding that you have. They don't have the will to please the Lord and the faith that you have. But to come into a building that's got thousands of people in there that's doing what you're doing, man. Boy, if that don't feel like you at home, what does? You see, that's why I don't see how people don't come to class on the Sabbath day. That That's the only place you have during the whole week to go and get your battery charged up. Look, look, the sister say when we did the Lord's Prayer brought her to tears. Hey, man, the choir got busy that day. It was just awesome, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I look just like I look forward to this show right here, hooking up with you brothers. Take me right on into the Sabbath. I look forward to seeing right. the family on the Sabbath day when I go to class. But other than that, man, what else? What else is there? There's Sunday. I mean, what? I mean, you just gonna chill out or whatever? Then during the whole week, man, it's like pff, you by yourself on the island. Uh, that's right. Yeah. You don't look forward to going, getting the right hand of fellowship or a hug or a kiss from one of your brothers and sisters. Wow. Man, I don't even feel right if I miss a Sabbath day, man. Man, please. It, it, <laughs> look, not not only don't miss it, I'm there on time. And on time. That's right. That's right, brothers. Mm-hmm. And see, like Brother Thomas Shell said, the Lord let us know that we're not alone, and we're not alone. But, 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 but that's where you're supposed to be every Sabbath day. The Lord and His wisdom set that up. He commanded it, and we need it. Hey, listen, I'm going to get my battery charged on the Sabbath day. You right. can do what you want to. You yeah. do what you want. I'm getting my battery charged. Cause look, a brother said last week, a sister told him. It's just good to see you, brother. Yeah, he, see what I'm saying? Say that, and he say that meant the world to him because just knowing he was there for somebody else. You know what I'm saying? And and they didn't even have a, a conversation. That's what it was right there. And he said that was enough, knowing he got to be there every week because somebody looking for him. You know That's what I'm talking about right there, brother Todd. That's what we right. be forgetting, man. You suppo- You are supposed to show up not only for yourself, but for the other people there that let me let me let me let me give y'all the word I'm about to use here. You're supposed to be there for the other people that for the other people that this might come up backwards on the screen. For the other you people need. that what that need, need you. you. That's right. They need to see you. They need to hug you. They need to hear your voice. They need to see your smile. They need that encouraging word from you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get my battery charged. I don't care what you say. I'm going to be there. And if if, if I'm the only one there, if I'm the only one there, I'm going to call somebody. Oh yeah, hey, hey. She said it don't take much, just the little things. You see, that's right. And, and so many times, people might tell me something that I said to them, or something that happened, and I forgot all about it. You know, and so, but to them, it meant everything. Right. You know, just like I, I was telling a story about that last time I had to go teach in Dallas, man. The the tr- I got on. The, I left home and g- I got on the train to go down to the airport in San Jose. Well, and I had to Uber the rest of the way. So you know the train with driver was driving slow that day. Otherwise they driving mock speed up and down them tracks. Train driver driving slow. 
Uber driver driving slow. I walked in the airport about four minutes before takeoff time. And then when I got in, I saw on the board they had delayed the flight by 30 minutes. You mm-hmm. see? But at the time, I had already called Sister Shanika. And I was like, well, shoot, I was getting frustrated. I'm going to head on back home where this ain't working. She was like, no, go on up there, Brother James. You know something might happen. So I was glad I called Sister Shanika because she was like, hey, go ahead and go on up there. So... I went, and so I was able to catch that flight. And, man, then when I got to Dallas, taught that lesson, man, somebody walked up to me and said some things to me. One was a brother and another was a sister, man. Sometime you might have to go do something. It's just for one person, man. You see that? That's right. It, just, just you, it was one person that needed something from you. And then guess what? You did what you were supposed to do that day. So a lot of times we have to remove ourselves out of these things and stop making everything be about us and think about our family in Christ that need us, man. Right. We do this stuff because people need us to do them. We don't get no paycheck for this stuff. Our paycheck going to be down at the end. Mm -hmm. So, you know. But that's that, brothers. I don't know what I'd do oh, yeah. without y'all. Brother Kevin. Yeah. Likewise, brother. That's right. Brother Kevin, that 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 uh what what year was that that we came down to St. Louis? And, 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 and brought y'all up to back up to Chicago. What year was that? Two thousand eleven, brother. Two thousand eleven. Mm-hmm. How about that? Okay. That was uh eleven years ago, right? Yes, sir. So yeah, 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 sister, uh, sister Hunter. Look, we're supposed to show up at class for our brothers and sisters. It ain't even about us. Even if you don't feel like going, okay, you did bump your toe on the footpost mm-hmm. of the bed. Mm-hmm. Rub it out, suck it up, go to class because somebody needed to see you there. I don't know how many times we have to say that to y'all. Right. You are there. You have a job to do. Just because you're not up there teaching, just because you're not an usher holding the door, you still have a job to do. Somebody needed that word from you. They needed to see you so they can feel good about what they're doing. So they can keep mm-hmm. keep their walk strong because you see your walk is strong. Hey, man, sometime I'll call a brother and just get energized off a conversation. Mm-hmm. Right, right. You know, I'll call a brother and be like, man, I got to I gotta step it up some. You see what I'm saying? One time I called Brother Shaq. Brother Shaq jumped me over, over the phone. You see what I'm saying? He got me to, you know, get myself back together, man. You see? And so, uh, you know, hey, man, we, we need each other, y'all. And I'm telling you something. When you ain't showing up to the class, man, you letting yourself down, but you letting your brothers and sisters down, too. Mm-hmm. It's all that simple. Man, what better not, place to be to get that healing? Right. Not to mention you 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 gonna reap what you sow. <laughs> right, that's right. <laughs> not to mention that part. <laughs> hey, that's hey, right. bro, Kevin. Not to mention by not showing up, mm. you gonna reap what you sow. Oh, right. And guess yeah. what? And then he said if you sow sparingly, you gonna receive sparingly. Sparingly, right. Guess what? On top of all of that, you gonna reap what you sow, man. And then you know at the class when we get in this book, man, I forget about everything else that's going on in the world. You know what I'm saying? It take away you don't think about your problem, nothing. no sickness, no nothing. nothing. This, this heals tell- your body and your mind. You know. Hey, look, I say it all the time, brother Todd. If you get a headache, open up your book and read it. I open this book, man. That's and see, right. and see, won't you forget about that headache? Mm. How about that, Sister Felicia? <laughs> 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 How about that? Yes, sir. So, hey, man. Hey, man, I love y'all. And uh, my trip to Baton Rouge was fantastic. It was uh, it was remarkable. And it really made me realize how much I missed the place. It made me realize how much work we yet we still have to do here in Oakland. It uh, made me realize a lot of things, Brother Todd. It made me realize how much I miss having you right there with me. Um, a lot of stuff, man. And people so, said stuff to me, like like uh brother Reggie was standing out there. Sister Felicia's husband telling me that I said some stuff some years ago, and he didn't understand it, but he said he understand it now. He see it now. That's right. So 
like I say, you just don't know the uh, the effect that you have when you say things. Even Brother Micah up there at the New Jersey class, the brother hit me with something one day, and I didn't realize that something that I had said to that brother had kind of, uh, had kind of, you know, it was it was it, it made him do some things. You see what I'm saying? And uh, you know, and uh, you know, and I didn't really even think much of it when I when I was saying it until he reminded me that I said the stuff. I just be saying stuff. You see. Mm-hmm. You know, but uh, so, yeah, man, this stuff is not only about our our own selves. It's about the whole body. It's about the whole body. If I'm a nose and brother Kevin is eyes and brother Todd is ears, we all need each other. That's right. Y'all see that? Brother Kevin, you with us? Yes, sir. See, we all we all need each other. Um, Hey, what brother Julius say? My mom, approached. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. In St. Louis, yes, sir, brother. Mm-hmm. We could have stayed there and talked all the rest of that evening, man. How about that? Mm-hmm. When I, when I, when I saw her, when I was in Riverdale, Julie said, "You make sure you go over there and speak to my mom, man." I, I sure went over there and sat with her for a few. Beautiful bring, lady. Bring her back, mm-hmm. Julius. Yes, sir. Right. Mm-hmm. Sister Felicia, that one lesson that one time got us right. What one lesson? What lesson? What lesson was that? What lesson was that, Felicia? She about to tell us in a minute. Watch that. I be forgetting though, really. Man. She typing it up. You done brought so much over the years, you know what I'm saying? You toned them all up, James. All the way up, man. And people, people, brother Todd, we sometimes me and you be forgetting <clears throat> that you've been reading for me. We've been together. Mm-hmm. Oh, about mm-hmm. coming to class every Saturday. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Brother Todd, since 2013, man. Right. You that's first right. read for me, and then and then in Baton Rouge in 2014. So that's man. a long time. And look, you know that foundation was set. Yeah, but man, that, that what solidified it for me was when you came to the class out in that accident. <laughs> I was like, man, this brother is serious about this word, man. <laughs> brother Kevin, my mother-in-law called him and said, "Brother James, I heard you wasn't teaching today. Who told you I wasn't teaching?" <laughs> <laughs> I said, "Well, let's go get it." The brother eye was closed, back was hurting, and everything, but you was up there bringing that word. Yeah, so, that airbag beat man, me, beat me to pieces. No matter boy. what, we got to get out here and do the Lord's work, brother. Right. And Brittany Murphy, she says she's learning from us. She need to hear these and thankful for these lessons. Yes. You on mute, brother Jane. I am. Can you hear me, brother Kevin? Brother Todd. She ain't on mute. I can hear. Him. Oh, but Todd, his speakers went out. His speakers went out. Some, but yeah, uh, I got you. but yeah, man. So, yeah, you see that particular day. See earlier the week before, where well, earlier in that week, I had a real bad car accident. Car got total mm-hmm. airbag, beat me up. Face, my I got this big strawberry. I got a scar right here. My eyes was closed and swollen, mm-hmm. and I was I had what they call in Chicago a pumpkin head. Yeah, and uh. <laughs> And uh, and so she called me and she said, well, well, since 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 everybody's going to stay at home and watch online tomorrow, I guess I won't see you. I said, well, what you mean by that? She said, well, you ain't teach. I said, I am. See, I wasn't going to teach. We were just going to watch Brother Bowie online. Right. But once mm-hmm. she said that, I said, no, I'm teaching. And I stood up there with a swollen face and did that lesson. Because when you really look at it, I wasn't incapacitated. I could still right. see. I could still speak. I could still stand up. I could still read. Right. So, right, so the right. lesson went forward, man. So, and it just showed me then that, hey, man, if you can do the job, do the job. And somebody needed you that day. Like, right. Like what you were saying. That's right. Yeah. But yeah. anyway, that was in twenty. Uh, that was that was that that was, was in twenty fourteen. That was September twenty fourteen. Mm-hmm. That yeah. was uh, she was eight years ago. Yeah, but you know, shoot, on this show here, I get so many nuggets from y'all, man. I'm in here taking notes because, you know, I don't have a lesson, so I'm taking it like everybody else. <laughs> hey, peace, yes, brother Thin. Brother Thin, did you see the, Did you see these flyers we got now? Brother Thin. 
because I think Brother Thin uh, is on uh he go out and do that evangelizing and stuff like that too mm. with uh in Cleveland and uh they supposed to be coming to St. Louis, huh, Brother Kevin? Yeah, I talked to him a couple of days ago. Brother Thin, you still on? He probably he probably got off. But uh if it's type right back in a minute, watch. Mm. Oh yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, he's saw him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, these are these are pretty handy jokers, man. The the pocket size is crazy. But brother Ty, you told me about that when I came down there. Yeah. The, about the pocket about size joints. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Very convenient. Like we've always had them bigger. See that? Right. And they go right in your pocket. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because when Brother Elijah came from that ATL, he had something we were passing them out. And Brother just might take it and put it in their back pocket. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Yes, you shall read what you sow. Okay, Brother Kevin. <laughs> I got to go, man. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. We hate to leave y'all, man. We just sit on here and chat all night and, and, and respond to, to the comments all night long. But a uh, big shout to everybody. We love y'all, man. Please believe that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, everybody have a great Sabbath. Have a great Feast of Pentecost, man. Stay positive, y'all. Love on each other. And uh, give each other the, uh, the 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 energy and the encouragement to keep on doing this thing. Because it, it does get rough sometimes, man. But we just got to keep on chugging along. And right. we got to lean on each other. That's the, that's the main thing. We got to lean on each other. Okay. Hey, Reek, I see you, brother. Peace, Israel. Brother Reek out here, uh, uh, Brother Todd and Brother Kevin. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 Vallejo, he fought his stumping ground up that way. Okay. Mm-hmm. Good night, uh, Bold Works, Deborah Davis, you as well. She says she's five hours from the closest location. Where you located, Sister Deborah? What city you in? 707, baby. <laughs> yes, sir. Where is uh, Sister Deborah? Where are you? Five hours. See, that's what I'm. That's another thing I'm talking about right there. You got people five hours from a class, wishing they was two hours away, and you got somebody two hours away, and they can't get there, won't even get there. Somebody an hour away can't get there, won't get there. Somebody five hours away, wishing they was two hours away from a class. That's right. Mm -hmm. You got so, people 20 minutes away won't come to class. Exactly. I know some uh, closer than that still won't come. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like they roll out the bed, they right at church. You know? Right, right. right. They roll, that means they roll out the other side then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or didn't get up. Right. She says she's in small town in a small town in Kansas. Kansas. Well, how far are you from Kansas City, brother Deborah? I mean, Sister Deborah. Cause uh, what's the brother name over there in Kansas City, brother Kevin? Uh, him and his wife over there. Gerald Mays. Yeah, Gerald Mays. Uh, Sister Deborah, how far are you from Kansas City? I guess she didn't want to say, but uh, Kansas City may not be that far from her. She's what she says, five hours from the closest class. How far is Kansas City from St. Louis? Oh, she say two hours from. Uh, two hours is, from Kansas City? Yeah, but she don't see one. Brother Kevin, when mm -hmm. last time you talked to Brother Gerald? It's been a couple years since I spoke with that brother. Same with you? Wow. 
Yeah, he changed his number, so I can't. Oh, uh, okay. Let me see. Dayton, Ohio. Uh, if you in Dayton, Ohio, you got the Cleveland class, huh? If you if you in Dayton, Ohio. Said Dayton, Ohio, but we coming. You hear me? She said you hear me. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, she coming. Okay. <laughs> oh, it was the only one I saw. Yeah, come on down here. See, see, sister, see, see, sister Deborah, Brittany Murphy go to Kansas City. Mm-hmm. So that's an option for you. Or oh, if you're willing to drive to St. Louis, come on down. With that. Right. You got an extended family down here. Come on with it. That's right. I wish I was a couple of hours away, mm-hmm. Brother James. I know. Hey, look, brothers and sisters, if you to this is a Pentecost high Sabbath weekend, a double Sabbath. If you can get to one of them locations, get to it. She said, what's the address in Kansas City? Let me see if I can find out real they quick while we're... They got it no more, James. Huh, they don't? Uh, Antoine told me about it. Oh, really? Oh, okay. My, my bad. I'll let him here talk to you about it. Okay. Four hours to St. Louis from Kansas. Yeah, I know that's right, Brother Drake. But see, like... Moving forward, like let's just say we got coming up down in the fall, we got the feast of uh, we got tabernacles gonna be a feast that the Lord wants you to be there. See, you can start planning right now to just go ahead and travel to the closest place to you, so you can already be in place for the weekly Sabbath and for uh for tabernacles of that week, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you if you all are far like like I was saying, there's a brother called me last week. And he's coming down here from Seattle to, to Oakland to come to uh, Pentecost to get that weekly Sabbath and Pentecost. So if you plan ahead, you can get it done. Right. It can be done, but everything is about preparation. Mm-hmm. Got to have your mind on it, and then you start preparing for it. Mm-hmm. So the schedule come out early enough for you to make them preparations. Hey, hey, Sister Deborah said if she travels, she going to Riverdale. <laughs> she said she going to the big house. Hey, I understand. Everybody's first uh, experience, they like to do it that way. So right. So look, Brittany Murphy. Oh, okay. Sean Coley. Hey, peace, brother Sean. Hey, I've been saying I'm gonna get. I'm I'm ready to get off here for about an hour now. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go for real. Yeah, but they keep to, me talking. Yeah, about to go in here and eat something. Peace. I got hungry now. Yeah, me too. Peace and blessings, family. Uh, enjoy, child. Lord willing, we'll see y'all again next week. Yes, sir. Uh, love y'all, brothers, man. Peace to the family that Likewise, was on tonight. Man, y'all yes. enjoy this double Sabbath. Yes, Indeed. Sir. Peace, y'all. All right, peace. Peace.